what's going on guys? I uh, hope you're having a great weekend. I'm having a great weekend. It's 2.52 a.m. on Sunday and I can't sleep to save my life. So what's the next best thing? The next best thing, pop on here, make a Night of Champions predictions video, which I lagged and slacked on doing because I've been out till about an hour ago. Um, so, not quite awake, not going to be my usual chipper energetic self, but here we go. Intercontinental Championship, Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase, after being in the Rogers Center in Toronto, seeing Ted DiBiase beautifully jump Cody Rhodes, um, you knew they were going to toss this on the card. I don't know whether it was actually announced on the show by the announcers, because I can't hear the announcers from the 100 section of, you know, the Rogers Center, so... I came online, saw that it was on there. Um, it's good in a way, because it means Ted DiBiase is not falling by the wayside, but in the same way, Cody Rhodes has been busting his ass, developing his character for a long time now, whereas T Ted DiBiase has fallen by the wayside, and now we're supposed to believe suddenly that they're equals again. Ted DiBiase is going to get instant, you know, face crowd reaction the same way Alex Riley did when he turned on The Miz, so that's going to be awesome. Um, like a lot of other people have said, it's not, I know for a fact, it's not an individual thought of mine. I hope that Cody Rhodes wins this only because I hope this becomes a long-standing feud, uh, which will give the Intercontinental Championship a lot of worth in the, in the meantime. But, um... It should be a good match. It'll be a chance to see whether or not Ted DiBiase belonged, you know, at the wayside where he was, or whether he should have, you know, been in the thick of the mid card the whole time. Whether WWE just dropped the ball on that. I'm gonna say Cody Rhodes wins this. Not, but that's not because I don't want Ted to win it. If that makes any sense at all. World Heavyweight Championship match. This is my message to Delex Man who. I only say the Lex Man because he and I have discussed it quite a few times on YouTube in the past week or so, but to any and all other Randy Orton haters out there that are voting for Mark Henry to win this match, just make sure you're not voting for Mark Henry just because he's not Randy Orton. Yes, I believe the push that Mark Henry has gotten leading up into this match has been amazing, but think about it and tell me logically if that push couldn't have been equally applied to just any other random big guy in the WWE. There was nothing about this push that Mark Henry has gotten that was specific to Mark Henry. There really, really wasn't. And being there in Toronto, and that's probably the last time I'm going to mention it, I promise, watching Mark Henry try to cut a convincing promo was like having all the fillings pulled out of my teeth at once. It's brutal. So all of you who just want Mark Henry to win just because he's Mark Henry, ask yourself legitimately. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself if Mark Henry would be a good world heavyweight champion, and or if you're just doing it to spite Randy Orton. I want Randy Orton to win this, and I'll tell you why. Orton deserves this title more than Mark Henry. Whether would No matter what anybody else says about it, he does. The other half of it being is if Cody Rhodes eventually drops the Intercontinental title to Ted DiBiase, I would love to see a Cody Rhodes-Randy Orton rivalry, and I wouldn't mind at that point if Randy Orton dropped the World Heavyweight title to Cody Rhodes, because Cody Rhodes would deserve it, because Cody Rhodes, although most, uh, some people, I will say, I won't say most, I will say some, although some people don't like Cody Rhodes and what they've done with his character, Cody Rhodes, in his, you know, disfigured, deformed, you know, disturbed character has busted his ass since breaking away from the from the tag team division and from uh, Legacy and all that other group stuff. Since he has branched out on his own, he's done amazing, amazing things. And if they gave him a title run, even if it was short, I would love it. So don't just sit there and call me an Orton mark. I don't mind Orton dropping the belt. I want Orton to drop the belt to somebody that deserves it and somebody that will develop with it and somebody that deserves that kind of boost. CM Punk versus Triple H, no disqualification match, and Triple H's title as COO on the line. Logic dictates Triple H is going to win, or it's going to be a no contest, because they're not going to take the COO title off Triple H anytime soon. If they had not put that stipulation on the match, this one would be a toss-up, because 
the way the rivalry is going with CM Punk and Triple H right now, neither one of them can really afford to lose steam, can they? I see Nash coming into this. I see John Laurinaitis coming into this. I wouldn't be surprised if, say, CM Punk, or, uh, or sorry, if uh, Cena or Alberto Del Rio got involved in this some kind of way. We know Nash is going to be involved. I wouldn't be surprised if we have some other surprise people, like a one-time run-in by somebody like Xbox or Shawn Michaels. I just called him Xbox because I'm tired. I, of course, meant X-Pac. Um, anything like that. A one-day, a one-night run-in by even Scott Hall if he can stay sober long enough. I can see any or all of these things happening, but as far as between the two of them, you know, we'll, we'll see a couple good hardcore spots. There will be weapons aplenty, but... I don't see CM Punk winning this because I don't see Triple H losing that title anytime soon. Okay, uh, moving on. WWE Champion Alberto Del Rio versus John Cena. I... The whole reason, and it's all over the internet, the whole reason Alberto Del Rio got the title when he did was they're going to tour Mexico in, like, October or something like that. And John Cena and The Rock have already been announced for a... Survivor Series match at Survivor Series. So, logic all dictates that Alberto Del Rio will retain tonight, tomorrow night. It's Sunday now, so yeah, tonight. Um, logic dictates Alberto Del Rio will win, and I don't mind that at all, because John Cena is a cancer on wrestling. The Prince of PG needs to be put down. Moving on. Fiddle 4-Way for the U.S. Championship match. This is one of the matches I am looking forward to. Um, kind of breaks my heart a little bit that Swagger's in it, because that's going to bring it down, in my opinion. But otherwise, you've got Alex Riley, Dolph Ziggler, and John Morrison. I have said for months and months and months now, I would I would have loved to see a Dolph Ziggler-Alex Riley rivalry. I would love to see Dolph Ziggler drop the U.S. title to Alex Riley. Let Alex Riley rate, rise to where I think he could be in the mid-card division. Let Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison develop a rivalry with each other that could elevate them both into the WWE title pitcher. One of the things that I would love to see somewhere along the way is Morrison versus Ziggler versus Punk versus Del Rio. But we're not lucky enough to see anything like that just yet, are we? No. I... As long as Swagger doesn't win this, I'll be a happy kid. Uh, other than that, it's a toss-up. You can't stop the role that uh, Dolph Ziggler's on. I'm kind of a mark for Morrison. I wouldn't mind if he won it. And, you know, Alex Riley's coming up, and he could really use the push. So anybody that's not Swagger could win this match, and I would be very, very happy. WWE Tag Team Championship match. Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne, collectively known as Air Boom, taking on The Miz and R-Truth, who don't have a name yet, but, you know, the names like The Miserable Truth and The Awesome Truth and stuff like that are passed around. Now, logic dictates once again they're using Air Boom as the catalyst to rebuild the tag team division, or at least that's what I think they're doing at this point. And I could believe Air Boom staying as a tag team a lot longer, more than I can believe Miz and R-Truth. R-Truth has had his attempts at the world title. Miz has had the world title. Uh, them working together as a tag team over the long haul, I don't see it. I would love to see it happen, but I don't see it happening. And if Air Boom are to be the catalyst of the tag team division, I can't see them winning as much as I would love to see Miz and Truth as the tag team champions because they are doing all kinds of amazing things right now. I just don't see it being in the cards. And, oh dear. Beth Phoenix versus Kelly Kelly. And uh, certain people that I've argued with about the Divas division as well. Um, somebody told me a little while ago that, you know, I shouldn't shit on Kelly Kelly because she's getting better. Now, I won't debate whether that's true or not because anybody that has been in anything for an extended period of time has to get better on some level unless they are a rock and they just don't move. Um, I don't think getting better is somebody that should be already holding the championship. If you hold the championship, you are the best. Getting better shouldn't be the best that the WWE has to offer. Getting better isn't the best that WWE has to offer. We have real wrestlers in the women's division. Give Tamina a shot, because they have given Tamina shit all for a shot. Beth Phoenix needs a shot. Natalia needs a shot. 
Natalia, you know, broke away from the Heart Dynasty group a long time ago, but she never really had that breakout moment, which would have been awesome. If WWE had their shit together and was able to ha hold on to Gail Kim, that would have been awesome. Even if they had held on to Molina, Molina was more interesting in the ring than, uh, than uh, Kelly Kelly is. And I'm going to say something else. I uh, watched a video a little while ago, and it was from Deluxe Man, Chick Kick, and Tyler. And uh, first of all, Chick Kick, uh, congratulations on getting into your uh, your wrestling school of choice and, you know, training with... Uh, can't think of who it is that you're training with right now off the top of my head, and I am very sorry for that. But that is very, very exciting for you, and I wish you all the best in that. But their video consisted of... Well, you just can't see Kelly Kelly's cha um, talent in the ring because you're too blinded by her looks. A, I don't like Barbie dolls. I don't think Kelly Kelly's that hot to begin with. Give me Lita. Give me, you know, Amy Lee from Evanescence. Give me Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. Give me Daphne. Give me uh, somebody like that. If you, want, if you want to talk about the visual aspect, that's, you know, so Kelly Kelly being hot... And, and blinding me to her, you know, apparent wrestling ability is not really a factor. And, um, yeah, a lot of the great wrestlers, women's wrestlers over time, maybe haven't been the prettiest. You had Luna Vachon, who was awesome. You had China, who was awesome. You had, uh, I, I, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. But there are also women that have been amazingly hot and contributed well to the women's division. And my example to you is this. Go back about seven years to the one and only time that the Women's Championship, not the Divas Championship, but the Women's Championship was the main event on Raw. Who was it? The Queen of Extreme, Lita, who was my favorite res female wrestler back then and still is today, versus my hometown girl, Trish Stratus. Oh, yes. You know what? Those two took the women's division to such a great place that it was the main event on Raw. It was the only time it's been the main event on Raw, and it's the only time that I can think of off the top of my head that it is deserved to be the main event on Raw. Trish Stratus versus Lita was the Rock versus Austin of the women's division. WWE women's wrestling used to be that good. If you let the proper people like Natalia, like Beth Phoenix, like uh, Tamina, Gail Kim, uh, even go to WC or wow, WCW, TNA. Um, Velvet Sky is not the greatest, but she's getting better, you know, um, I would love to see ODB in the WWE. Get some actual wrestlers in your women's division, and I will be excited about the women's division again, and no, I will not then be calling it a piss break, guys, but right now it is. If Beth Phoenix squashes Kelly Kelly like I want her to do tonight at Night of Champions, I will have a glimmer of hope for the women's division. If not, you will only be proving that Kelly Kelly is the John Cena of the women's division and needs to leave. Summarize that entire rant for a second. I want Beth Phoenix to win this match. WWE needs Beth Phoenix to win this match if they ever want their Divas division to be taken seriously again. All right. Got a little excited there, and now I kind of am awake. But uh, that is my predictions for tonight's Night of Champions. Um, I don't know. There, we have less than 20 hours until the pay-per-view, but if anybody else wants to toss their predictions down in the bottom, that would be awesome. I've been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Let me know what you think. Start a conversation. Leave your, your Q&A questions in the moderator, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Wow.